Hello and welcome to this tutorial about a, top, a topology uh, topology optimization in Abacus with uh, the example of a bridge which is uh, used for a uh, bridge construction contest. Um, in this example we will uh, cover the topics how to do a topology op optimization in uh, Abacus and how to um, analyze it and uh, extract it. So for the first thing we want to get to know the, the parameters, how to model it. And for this reason I have a picture of a bridge here. This is the testing um, and um, we will model it uh, quite a bit differently but uh, you can see the measurements in here. What we will do is we will change it to something like this here. Um, let me explain that a, a bit. We have the design space modeled in here, simply a block, just a solid cube. And that's because we want to give the uh, solver the optimal freedom to do whatever he think is it's best, um, it's best for, the, for solving the, um, the equations. So we give the solver the freedom to put material all over the place in here but not in the space in here because in there we want to have it this is a requirement by the testing we want to have a uh, driving um, uh, cars uh, should uh, go through them through, through the bridge um, we cannot allow the bridge to be uh, a full block in the middle so we have to make some space in there and the simplest method to do that is to simply cut the the, the driving space out of the region where the sol solver can put material. So for the uh, cat I simply removed material out of the block and then you get something like uh, this in here which we saw uh, in the illustrator document. So uh, the basic measurements are in here and I uh, did a uh, cat model and output uh, extracted it as an IGS a document so I can import it in Abacus 6.13. So let's start in Abacus. We started as a simple uh, um, standard model. And let me just quickly arrange the view. All right, in here we have to import uh, the part, and this is done with file import part, and then you can choose IGES. And I have to go to the location where I have my IGES document, click OK. In here we could uh, scale it or something, um, geometric tolerances, um, but, but we can stay with the default values in here. Press OK and now we have the, um, yeah, the, the, the base for the optimization, the, the freedom of the design space you could say. Another thing we cannot allow the solver to do is to put any holes in the driving uh, the driving area. So we have to divide our design space in two separate parts. Um, one part is the, um, the design space at uh, the non-design space in here and the other part is the design space up in here. So in the illustrator document we make a partition on here cutting through all here and say solver you can put material all in here but not in there this material you you should uh, left alone okay now how you, you do that uh, you go in here and, and you define a cutting this cutting is done here, partition cell, define cutting plane. And here is it quite simple because we have a plane already here, so we can do a point in normal um, cutting operation. Now we have to select the point, we select that point and a normal direction of the plane. In this case we select this line and this line is normal to a plane which is located in here and this is uh, equal to the plane where the cars will drive through. So if I create partition, you see that the partition is created right as I wanted to. And it's divided 
the um, the optimization base into two separate sections. All right. Another point is we have to model later on the um, the, the the constraint points where the constraint can can be modeled, and for that reason we have to simply partition a cell, uh, a face, and in this case we partition the lower face. So we click on here, partition face, go on here, select done, and now it wants me to select an edge that appears vertical on the right, we can select that one. And now you can create the partition on that face. I will do that with lines and the points are minus 374 and then both both uh, sides on the edges so minus 375 One second. and 150 and minus 375 and minus 150 that's the first line and the second line is 375 and 150 and 375 and minus 150 that's it now we can click done and we have now two straight lines where uh, our constraints can be modeled. Okay, we will model it a bit differently. At uh, a bit differently as that, because we want to model it as a pressure, not as a pressure just on those faces, but a pressure on the whole driving um, driving area. So. For that reason, we don't have to create a set or something like that in here. Um, this is just for simplification. Okay, now let's move on to the next point in the tree, the property. Here we can define materials, uh, the sections, and um, yeah, we'll do it as first. Uh, we will do the, the materials. In this case we will use aluminium and for that reason we have to input first a density. Density is uh, 2.9 times um, I think e to the minus 9 tons per square uh, millimeters, tons per uh, cubic millimeters. Yeah, um, That's the uh, density and the last we will model it as simply a linear elastic case with a Young's module of 70,000 Newton per square millimeters and the Poisson's ratio of 0 0.33 and that's about it for the material I should give it a name and in this case we will model it as aluminium I'll press OK and now we can move on to the sections sections we will create two sections both are hom homogeneous. First one is called design and has uh, aluminium as material. The second one is called no design and also has aluminium as a material. All right, now we have to assign those sections to the different cells in here. So we go to assign section. We can give uh, the sets which are created in here names. For example, design set. And click on here uh, that you can see. I selected the, the, the upper cell. That's my design space, All right? And the section is the design. Um, similar to no design. and I will model oh something went wrong no design set I have to select it and press done and the no design section is 
assigned here. Now I cannot uh, differentiate between those two sections but if I change the colors here to sections I can see that uh, those are different sections. Okay, both are modeled with a property so I'm done with the property module in here and I can move on to the assembly module. In here I will just simply put the part in here and make it a dependent mesh, mesh on part, as it is recommended for the most cases. Press OK. And I think I have nothing to do for the assembly in here because both parts, um, simply one part, but both sections are included in the assembly. Now I can move on to step. Step, I will create a static general step just as yeah, as um, simply a general loading step with uh, the default uh, parameters. You could go on and uh, select nonlinear geometry if you um, have to deal with uh, large rotations, but for the simplifications, um, for, for, for the matter of simplification, I will just run it with, uh, with linear geometry. I think you can also um, Stay with the default values of for the Im incrementation, and um, the, the the equation solver can also be the the default one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I have um, those areas. I could he in here um, describe certain output parameters I want to check, but in this case, we will also stay with the default. Interaction, now um, I don't have to do anything because we can simply model the pressure on the surface which is already defined in here and um, the constraint can be set on the line so interaction we can stay, uh, let, let's stay empty so we can move on to the load module and in here we create two boundary conditions the first one is uh, the fixed, fixed boundary condition and it's a displacement rotation boundary condition and I select the left line. You could create a set but yeah, fixed. And in here we set every translational degree of freedom to zero. Ramp as an amplitude is uh, fine in here, plus OK. And on the other side we also create a boundary condition, rename it uh, loose, VC and in here we select uh, the other line okay and this is the loose one loose and um, the C direction will get um, not constrained in here so can move freely in here but it's uh, fixed in the other directions alright those are the boundary conditions and we define the load, in this case the pressure, continue, now we can select the surface, we can create the set in here as well, press done and the magnitude is 10 newtons per square millimeters just as a basic setting and that's about it for the load module. Now we have to mesh it and for that reason we have to first uh, seed part instance and this will not work because we have to put it on part in here not assembly but part so we can um, do it like this it's just the thing I want to check first is yeah we will uh, just create the seeds here I think we can stay with a approximate uh, global size of 12.5 millimeters. This is not too large and not too small. So um, you could optimize uh, the mesh definitely, but I think uh, the element quality is is fine for this analysis. So we stay with that mesh. And now we have to define optimization parameters in order to, uh, to uh, do a optimization. But for a quick test, I will just run it um, once without any um, 
without any optimization parameters just to check it and I will call that test stable to defaults and submit it. Now the reason for for why I'm doing this is I want to check if the boundary conditions are assigned correctly and if the model is uh, fully defined. If not it would get me some errors in here and I could um, estimate the errors and correct it before I'm doing the optimization. That has a reason that optimization uh, equations or optimization uh, is quite a bit more demanding regarding CPU resources and for for a matter of, of time. So it's always wise to check the model first if it's modeled correctly, if you are getting uh, what you expected right from the boundary conditions and then optimize it. This should not take uh, too long because we have um, we have uh, chosen a decent element size. It's not too fine. And as long as there are no errors and no warnings, you can uh, be calm and just wait about a minute or so. I think it only has one iteration. Yeah, it's completed. Now I can check the results and I will check the stresses. Ooh, it looks quite what we expected, right? Um, you don't have to be afraid of that because I think it's a scaling error. We have about 190 newtons per square millimeters for aluminium. It's quite demanding, but it's not impossible. So we go to options, common, and you can see in here you have a scaling factor and you change that to one then it looks uh, less scary what you see right now is yeah you have the stresses in here on the boundary conditions makes sense um, you also have something like a, a curved um, load path which is indicated in here which will get um, important when you do the optimization so if you if you uh, you if you had to optimize the part you would uh, take all the material in here right out of the box because you see it's no no strength requirement in here so um just guess it so um, yeah piece of advice um to just guess um, how the optimization may look like in order to trust the optimization output. Okay, we can also check the deformation plots. Uh, maybe not the magnitude, but the y direction. And here you, you have to be careful because red is uh, the lowest one and blue is the most one, but it's symmetric and in the middle it has more than on the outside, so that makes sense. Okay, boundary conditions seem to be applied correctly. And now we will check uh, the optimization process. For that reason, we go in the optimization module and create a optimization task. In this case, a topology optimization, we can name it topology and continue. Now we have to uh, select um, the optimization region and that's why we we have done the partition. We can now select just the upper part and click on done. And in here we can uh, define a lot of uh, values. For example, perturbation modes, convergence, parameters. Um, those are fine tuning parameters, which we will not cover in here, but stay with the defaults right now. As the topology optimization task is uh, created, we have in here a, a little tree and you can see what you have to define in here, design responses, objective function constraints, maybe a geometric restriction or stop conditions. We will do the design responses first. So responses are parameters that are get extracted from the model, like the mass, the volume, the strain energy or the um, something you want to, to measure and to 
influence. So for example, we create um, a design response and you can also make a distinction be between single term and combined term um, uh, design responses for the reason that you can combine yourself a, a design response you want to measure, maybe volume times mass times something like that. But uh, we will stay with a single term and the first term we will measure is the volume. So we have volume and we want to do that in the whole model. And we check in here volume and press OK. The next one we want to define is the strain energy. And it's also single term, it's also a whole model. And in here you have got the, string, uh, the strain energy. So what I want to do is I want to optimize the strain energy to be a minimum because if I have, I, I want a very stiff bridge and if a uh, bridge is very stiff it will not move uh, this much under a given load. So the strain energy will be low. A stiffer bridge means lower strain energy. So for that reason I will just define a objective function and I will just let it be the objective one. Continue and here I have to select a response. Okay, so the name is in this case strain energy and I want to minimize the design response value. Okay, that fits. Um, now why did I define the volume? If I didn't define any volume, the solver would say, okay, I have to make it stiff. I will let every material in there that is there because that's the most stiff bridge I will um, get you. But that's not the, the point. I will. I want to have the most stiff bridge under the 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 less the, 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 under lesser material um, usage. So I want to specify maybe a quantum, uh, a um, a percentage value of the given volume to say to the solver take maybe 10% out of the original material and make out of that 10% the most stiff bridge you can give me. That makes uh, it a, a bit more discreet because then the solver has to put the material just in there where it has the most effect on the stiffness and that's what we want to do because we cannot see where the the most uh, the, the material has the most influence on the stiffness. So you go in here and click uh, create constraint. Maybe you na name that volume constraint. And you also have a name in here. So you define the design response, in this case the volume. And now you can specify a value or maybe a fraction of the initial value. That's what we want to do. We say it's 10% and click on OK. Now that's that's all we want to define. That's um, everything what needs to be defined for this initial topology optimization. You could now go to job and in this case we have the optimization process we want to create and in this case the name of the optimization process model task is the only task we created, the topology uh, task, and in here also the, the job parameters, percent of uh, physical memory, etc. etc. You can click on OK and simply run it. Now, this takes on uh, this machine I have here maybe around one hour, and I've run it already and, uh, before I did the video, and that's what you get from the optimization. Uh, it's um, how do you get there? It's about you have to define um, a cutting plane, and the, the parameter you want to cut is ELS, which uh, is more or less the density of the the material in uh, um, refer to the Hyperworks solution, and there you can uh, define a threshold, and um, yeah, go and go from there. You also can click through the different iterations, uh, which is not available right now at the moment. But um, 
for that example you can uh, look at the tasks and also with the cutting plane you can vary the threshold so you can definitely see how uh, the bridge should be constructed now you have to excuse that i have not so much um, knowledge about the um, out, uh, the, the post-processing ways in Abacus. Um, so if there's any further need for that, you can always comment it. And yeah, thanks for watching.